Welcome back. So now let's see the requirement two of the question called JAMA to work out the linear program using a graphical method. And in this case, we are uh, I, we are going to identify and calculate the binding or the slack resources. So that means we know that in the requirement number one that we are going to produce 10 units of JAMA A and 30 units of JAMA B. Okay. So if that's the case then, if we were to slot them back into the limiting factor equation, we are going to see for the combination of these two products, whether or not we can use up the machine processing time, raw materials as well as labor. And if this is not the case, whether or not there will be a surplus, or it would be a binding resource. So let's see them. So, first of all, we are going to say the machine processing time. So for machine processing time, the equation um, would be the 3x plus 10y, but now we're only considering whether or not we will exceed or uh, below the maximum uh, machine processing time, raw materials and labor. So if that's the case then, okay, we are going to produce 10 and 30 of the JAMA A as well as the JAMA B. Yeah? So if that's the case then, uh, for each JAMA A we need 3 hours and for each JAMA B we need 10 hours. So we're going to produce 10 and 30 units and 3 and 10 hours for each. Okay. So if that's the case, then that will give me 330 hours. Yeah. And for the machine processing times, the maximum hours is just to be 330. So that means we use up all the machine hours. So, if that's the case then, the machine time will simply be the binding resource. It's simply because we are not using up the machine time, let's say 320, but we use up all of those 330 hours. And that means if we were to increase one machine time, perhaps we have to buy another machine, or perhaps we need to outsource it for somebody else to do that for me. So if that's the case then, what is the premium that you are willing to pay for if you were to uh, select those options? So if that's the case then, if there's a binding resource exists, the share of price, we need to calculate that later on. Okay. Let's see the second one. The second one is for material. So second one for raw material, 400 kilos. We've got 16 for X and Y for 4. And X we're going to produce 10 units and 30 for Y. So 160 plus 120, so that would give me 280 kilos. So the maximum kilos is to be 400 available. So that means we only use up 280 out of its 400. So that means we are not using up all of those, and hence there will be 120 kilos left. So that will be the slack resource. So what do I mean by slack resource is where we've got the surplus. If we've got a surplus, there will be no shadow price for this. 
It's simply because we don't have to say, right, we're going to outsource it to somebody else to do that for me. It's simply because we've got surplus there. If that's the case, that may create, for example, idle time, just the raw materials. Um, I mean, we can only use up 280. We've got lots of these human beings. We can't use up all of those because of the limitation on our capacity and so on. Because of the, uh, I mean, the labor is unskilled and so on. So maybe idle time may exist. So the slack resource or surplus resource, or we can call it as the unbinding resources that would be the same thing so that'll just tell me that we have no shadow price in this particular circumstance okay so that's number two is for raw material so number three then why not stop the tape now two minutes to work out still at number three it's related to labor time to see how we get on Right, I'm sure that you've got the correct answer. So let's see then. For labour, totals to return to the forward tape, we've got six and six. So 10 units for x, 30 units for y, so 60 plus 180, so that would give me 240 so the total is to be oh 240 hours and that means there will be nothing left if that's the case labor it should be a binding resource yeah and that means the shadow price exists okay. so that means in this question, requirement number two, identify the binding and also slack resources. So binding resource is the machine and labor time, M and L for short. The slack resource is related to raw materials. Okay. So if that's the case, then let's look at the requirement three. So we're going to calculate the shadow prices for each of these binding resources. So, we know that the, if you look back to the requirement um, solution number one, for the step five, we work out that optimal production plan, where we mix the machine time as well as the labor time together. So if that's the case then, because machine time as well as the labor time, according to our calculation, the requirement two would be the binding resource. And of course, there'll be a shadow price related to machine as well as labor. So let's see how we're going to work this out then. So, in tackling the shadow price, all we need to do is going to follow the steps. We're going to follow the three steps approach. Why not? So, the step one is we're going to plot one onto those binding resource. And then step two is we're going to calculate the revised contribution based upon the new number of X and Y. And then, oops, the step three is going to use the revised contribution in step two are going to minus the original uh, contribution that we've just worked out before and we're going to solve the difference and that will be a shadow price so let's see how we're going to do this then so first of all for the machine processing time so first of all take two equations from the step five which is the optimum production plan plot that there and then plot one so see how we get on so uh, from the step five we know that the machine processing time equation 3x plus 10y equals to 330 and then labor time 6x plus 6y 
equals to 240. So first of all, if we're to add 1 on top of this 330 of the machine hours, so that means if we were to use additional machine hours, so if that's the case then, how much we're we willing to pay for uh, by revising the x and y value. So in this case, that's the step one. So step two is going to calculate the revised contribution. Of course, we know that the contribution, according to step three, so you can see before, is 50x plus 70y. So what would be the x and y then? So based upon the step one, all we need to do is to revise the formula again, or revise the equation again. So that means we're going to times two and then use the second to the equation minus the first one. So let's see them. So 6x plus, oh sorry, uh, yeah, 6x plus um, 20y equals to 331 times two and that will give me Six hundred sixty-two. Six x plus six y equals to two forty. So all we need to do is to use the first equation minus the second one. So what does that come to then? Fourteen y equals to four hundred and twenty-two. So y would be equals to see then is to be thirty point. 14 units. Of course, you may argue that, well, Steve, we can only work out, for example, 30 units in the real life for uh, different products. Yes, you're absolutely correct, but we are not going to uh, make 30.14 units in this case. All we're going to do is to see if we were to add additional one machine processing time, how much we're willing to pay for them. That's the reason why we calculate the shadow price. So we slot that into the formulae. That will work out the x will be equals to 9.86 unit. So if that's the case, then all we can do, we work out the x and y, we slot that into the contribution formula. So x will be 9.86 unit and y 13 point, uh, 30 point 14 unit. So if that's the case, plot them together. So that will give me the revised contribution being 2,602.8 dollars. That's the revised contribution. And of course, step three that we're going to do is going to calculate the difference. So that difference between the revised contribution with the original contribution is called the shadow price. So, revised contribution which is calculated from the step 2, 2602.8. What about for the original contribution then? So original contribution, if you go back to step 5, is to be the maximum of the combination of the x and y units will be 2,600. Okay, so we simply minus this. And that will give me 2.2. Eight dollars per hour. That's called the shadow price. But what does that mean then? So let's see then. In your question, 
Um, we are told that for JAMA A, it takes 3 hours per unit, JAMA B, 10 hours per unit. So suppose for each hour, for the machine hour, we'll have to spend $5 per hour, just make up that figure. So normally, for example, if we operate our business in JAMA Limited, we have to pay for five dollars per hour for the machine hours. Now, share the price is two point eight. So that means if JAMA uses an additional one machine hours JAMA can pay for the maximum premium equals to $2.8 per hour so that means assist me the JAMA the normal price for JAMA is five dollars per hour by calculating the shadow price so that means the maximum final price that JAMA is going to pay for will simply be seven point eight dollars per hour that's what I mean by shadow price so shadow price is the price on top of the normal one so that means okay if you were to use additional one machine hour for example you're gonna outsource that to somebody else and somebody else will charge you for example six dollars per hour so if that's the case you will say right that's absolutely fine because based upon our calculation we can pay for a maximum of 2.8 as the premium you know premium is the difference but now you simply charge me six, so that means uh, six minus five as the normal price. This will be one less than two point eight. Yes, I'm going to accept the order. Uh, I'm going to accept the offer. That will be absolutely fine. Any rate that is more than two point eight, of course, we need to negotiate that with the uh, third party. For example, okay. So there you have it. So that's what I mean by shadow price. So, with your permission, stop the tape now for five minutes and work out the shared price for labor time on your own using the three steps approach you remember so the step one that we're going to do is where we are going to um, plus one on the labor time and then we're going to work out the revised contribution based upon the revised number of x and y units and then we simply calculate the difference between the revised contribution with the original one that will give me the shadow price. Remember, based upon the binding resource, in this case, labor time. Stop the tape for five minutes or 10 minutes to work out the shadow price for labor time on your own. So, how do you get on? I'm sure they can work that out correctly. So let's see them. So again, step one that we're going to do is going to plus one. Of course, based upon the step five in requirement one of the optimum production plan. So first of all, got the machine time. Equation is to be 3x plus 10y equals to 330. And then we've got labor time. 6x plus 6y equals to 240. And then all we need to do is to say, right, if we were to increase one hour for a labor time, what is the maximum we're gonna we are willing to pay for or we can pay for? So step two that we're gonna do is gonna calculate the revised contribution. So revised contribution, okay, we're gonna say right. The contribution for x is to be 50 and y for 70.
but what would be the x and y value then? So all we need to do is to say, right, based upon the step number one, so we're going to uh, do the calculations again. So we simply times 2, I can simply divide by 2, yeah, in the labour time, it's entirely up to you. Um, so 6x plus 20y equals to 660. And then 6x plus 6y equals to 241. So all we're going to do is we're going to take one minus another. Slot that into a calculator. It will give me the x value equals to 10.23 units. The y value equals to 29.93 units. And all we can do... Slot them back into the contribution. So 10.23 unit and 29.93 unit. And that will give me the revised contribution is to be 2606.6. So if that's the case, then all we can do next is going to calculate the shadow price in the step three. That means a difference. We take the revised contribution, subtracting the original one. So revised contribution is 2,606.6. Original contribution is 2,600. And that would give me... $6.6 per hour. What does that tell us then? So that means if JAMA uses an additional one labor hour, For example, we're going to sign a contract with the temporary staff using the flexible arrangement, for example, zero-hour contract. Or perhaps we're going to employ the part-time staff to increase our capacity and so on. If we were to use an additional one labour hour, the maximum that JAMA can pay for is $6.6 per hour. So suppose the normal rate for labour is $5 per hour. So if that's the case then, okay, we're going to make that figure, $5 per hour. What is the maximum final rate that JAMA can pay for its labour. So if that's the case, then okay, so the share of the price is based upon the normal price worth of five, for example. So if that's the case, then the maximum final rate that JAMA can pay for would be $6.6 per hour plus $5 per hour. That would give me $11.6 per hour. That would be the maximum rate uh, that JAMA can pay for his uh, labour if uh, JAMA were to employ one particular labour additionally because uh, we've got the maximum capacity there uh, within a company for the total labour hours is just to be 240. If you increase by one, for example, 241, okay, the maximum you're going to pay for as the premium is to be 6.6. .6. Increase by two, okay, 6.6 .6 times two, for example. That's the maximum premium that that JAMA is going to pay for. So, quite a complicated idea, I should admit that, but we are nearly there. Finally, okay, finally, question four. Calculate the relative loss for JAMA if one additional JAMA A product is produced or one additional JAMA B product is produced within a current constraint. 
So if that's the case then, we know that the current mix of this product is x equals to 10 units and y equals to 30 units. So that means the x would be the jamma A, the y would be the jamma B. So if that's the case then, here's the question. First of all, if we were to increase one unit of x, or you can call it the jamma A, So if that's the case, then all we can do is this. Because within the current range, or current constraints, we can only produce 40 units of pot in total. If we were to increase one unit of x, that would decrease one unit of y. And that means the x would be 11 units and y would be 29 units. And all we can do is we're going to slot them back into the maximum contribution in this step three. So if my memory serves me right, for the step three, the maximum contribution will be 50x plus 70y. So 50x plus 70y So if that's the case, then that will give me the revised contribution in this case is to be 2,580. And we're going to compare that with the original contribution, which is 2,600. And that means uh, we will lose $20. If we were to increase one JAMA A and decrease one JAMA B, okay? within the current constraint. So what about for the opposite then? So if we were to increase one unit of JAMA B or Y product. So if that's the case then that would be 31, uh, I mean, so minus one plus one, so that will give, give me nine units and 31 unit, yeah? So 931, so $50 per unit times 9 unit plus $70 per unit times 31 unit. So that would give me the revised contribution is to be 2,470. But the original one, if we produce 10 and 30, it would give me the contribution 2,600 and we will lose further of 130. Okay. So the best advice for you, surely, gonna produce 10, 10 and 30, rather than producing one uh, more of X or one more of Y. But if you were to select from these two options, uh, one more of X or one more of Y, surely you're gonna choose one more of X because it will give you less relative loss. Okay, because first of all is uh, 20, and secondly is 130. Okay. So, those requirements um, have covered the syllabus requirements of ADA, okay, related to linear programming. So, let me just bring you back to the theory part uh, for the linear programming. So, as you can see, the situations would be, we've got two products only, yes, two products, more than two, we can't solve that out. Uh, we've got multiple limiting factors, we can use the linear programming using graphical method, so by uh, focusing on the ISO contribution line. And the steps that we're gonna do, is surely we're gonna use the DDD go method, define variable constraints as well as the objective, and then we draw the graph based upon the table and then we can have the optimum solution or production plan. If there are any of these binding resource, which means if we were to outsource that to somebody else 
So that's that for us, potentially. What is the maximum premiums that we are going to pay for? So that's what I mean by shadow price. You can also call it as the dual price or dual value. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to follow the three steps uh, to calculate this. I hope you can remember that. Okay, so three steps in there. And finally, we've looked at any of its relative losses. If we were to increase one unit of X or one unit of Y, so what would be that loss be? So, I hope you're absolutely happy with the linear programming section. So that's the end of the linear programming. APC, accounting for your future.